Curtis, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Oh, actually, you we, should, we should probably introduce you. So our guest right now is uh, Curtis <laughs> Robinson, like you said, the uh, writer of a popular article on the on, on the on the finances of F1 called the uh, battle for F1's billions. That uh, I believe was was your last year paper at uh, a university. It was, yeah. And and it went quite well in the end. Uh yeah yeah, yeah it went pretty well. I got a you I got a first for it, which that's was a, uh, you know, in the top rank of marks. So that's amazing. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> congratulations, yeah, I was quite, dude. I was quite after that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and from what I like, from what we understand, like just the the writing of the paper from the beginning was a bit of a journey and 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 the the, the good people of the internet had a hand to play in, in making it the success <laughs> that it was yeah well it it started off um in our in my second year of university it's the the module that it was for um started two years ago and that's when we had to start planning it and get our ideas for what we were going to write and um i'm quite a big formula one fan so i thought Well, not not any many people in my course were. They're all doing football, so I thought I'd do Formula One. <laughs> nice. Um, but the only problem is, is that you needed at least three interviews, like first-hand interviews with people with knowledge on the subject that you're writing about. Right. And obviously, with Formula One, it's it's hard enough for you know established journalists to get interviews anyway, let alone a random student from a university. Yeah. So <laughs> a little it was bit pretty exclusive. hard. That's, <laughs> yeah, so I went on to. Um, Yeah, yeah, the Formula One subreddit, and because I know, yeah, the community there is excellent, and I thought maybe mm -hmm. someone there could have some contacts or could point me in the right direction, and they did. <laughs> I ended up getting three pretty good interviews, I thought. And well, that's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Looks like you, you used them well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it it was a great read. Uh, this despite what the grammar people of Reddit can <laughs> <laughs> have to say. Yeah I, yeah, I don't really have much choice about how I wrote it. That's just what we were told to do, and yeah. that's how we're taught for three years to write short <laughs> sentences. Because for online reading, it's if you don't capture or keep their imagination going for like, you know, if you write a big long paragraph, they're going to get halfway through it and just give up. So you, we're taught to write short, punchy sentences and paragraphs to keep people oh, going. But one hundred percent, I understand that. I mean, it's not <laughs> it's not that I that I necessarily like agree with that mentality, but the world everybody has, does it. The world has it's, zero patience anymore. Yeah, oh yeah, that's it's <laughs> not not the way literature was supposed to be done, but you know, in yeah, this day and age, it has to be. Do you look at all any news site, motorsport dot com, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera, that's <laughs> that's how they're written. Yeah, even I think I think the older, more established names like the Motorsport Magazine, like. They're probably the only ones out there in terms of F1 that are still pumping out like nice like literary pieces like consistently because yeah. other, other, otherwise like everybody's just you know trying. I mean I, I don't want to say like, like to get clickbait, but you you, you gotta get people's attention. That's a challenge. Joe Sayward type of guys. Oh, I was writing, Joe, yo, writing pages and pages. Well, you 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 page, talked to the man himself, didn't you? You 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 had a Skype conversation with uh, Paddock Sage Joe Sayward. I did, yeah. Yeah. Well, that actually came from the Formula One subreddit. Someone said to uh, give him give him a shout and i've sort of read his article articles before but mm -hmm. it wasn't someone i thought about doing and then i messaged him like that day and then he came back to me straight away and was like yeah we'll skype two days later and then two days later yeah we'll skype in him and we talk, spoke for about an hour or so that's amazing yeah that's cool. great i th that must have been an experience in, in and of itself to talk to 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 joe oh uh, yeah it really was like, he's he was like really kind he was so helpful and um gave me pointers On uh, for my career as well, so I want to sort of head out into the world of Formula One journalism. He gave me pointers how to start that, and he as well was giving me a great interview and give. Well, he would know. Uh, he give, was he 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 climbed all the way up to being editor of Autosport for Formula yeah, One. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said he started off camping in like you know the Grand Prix, somehow getting like a press accreditation, just camping at the circuits and yeah. <laughs> sort of just yeah. bullying his way through, you know, to get interviews and that. So that's awesome, man. <laughs> It must yeah. have been hard to. Pare down an hour interview to one one little quote. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was really hard. Yeah, I'm trying to write it back because just listening over to the interview I recorded down and just trying to find you know pull three or four quotes out of it that I use the actual piece. But yeah, it's worth worth the hard work. No doubt, man. No, it's it's it, it it is a beautiful piece, and we have like lots and lots of questions about that, and 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 hopefully like we can just talk about you know uh, more in depth and and in general too. But before that, I just, I'm just, I, just, just curious because 
Uh, actually, before we start uh, on the show right now, uh, we're talking to this Irish guy, uh, and he's also like he's he's interested into uh, motorsport journalism, uh, and he, he he mentioned something that's that's really interesting and uh, interesting to me at least, and he says he said that for him like you know in the future it might be difficult because he was you know he was hoping that there would be no trouble uh, for him going to school in Britain because Britain is basically the place for motorsport journalism and and thinking about it like that's it, it's probably true so you i mean you you're lucky that that you had that well that you are uh from the UK and have that access um but like what are your thoughts on, on that like the fact that like basically like if you if you are an aspiring journalist out there that wants to write about motorsport you pretty much have to go to britain yeah i'd say so if, if you're like look, aiming for you know, the top publications and papers but well, there's still each country has their own press for sure um so they could write for but yeah obviously all like the i think the main websites are autosport and uh, all that like they're all uk based and you know write the uk style which is all taught over here <laughs> so <laughs> So I don't say like, but obviously, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but what what got you personally interested in, in 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 pursuing that field? Like, were you like, at one point woke up when you were fourteen and you're like, all right, I want to write about F one. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't. I um I always wanted to be a uh, pilot. An airplane pilot was my, you know, as a kid growing up until I was about you know fifteen, sixteen, and then I found out you have to be really good at maths, which I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've always been a massive sports fan. Um, with Formula One and football being my main sports, and you know I'm not very good at playing football. Uh, I thought I could talk and write about it, and, and then as well as other sports as well. So I just decided I didn't know. After I finished um, high school, I mm. I still wasn't sure what to want to do. I ended up going travelling for a bit, and still undecided. And then I decided I saw a sports journalism course at a university, and I thought that that would do. <laughs> <laughs> That, that was my intent. It's basically just uh, a decision at one point in my life. It wasn't like a big thing I was building up to. It mainly sort of came on late. And it, but I mean, like, I'm sure like you like you would have by this point like have gone to a few races and experienced like the passion for F1. Gen <laughs> it's gonna sound bad, but generally I haven't. Um, <laughs> really? I, no, I, over here. No Grand Prix yet. I'll say two hundred pound or so for a ticket. Yeah, um, I was never able to afford it as a kid. I'm not from like a very privileged background, so I can never do it. Um, but then I went. I went to the British Grand Prix this year. It was my first ever Grand Prix. Oh, how was that? Oh, great. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, I loved it. And like, it's so much. You don't seem to like, notice how watching on TV. You don't think it'd be good to be there because you know the cars just zoom past and that's it. But right. being there, it's, you just can't describe the feeling. Like, you actually, you can feel like the cars as they go past. You feel the vibrations and. Mm. The atmosphere and everything was amazing. And it's, yeah, a bit, it's a bit I, of a different experience, isn't it? Like when you're watching when you're watching it on TV, as opposed to actually being there. Like you don't have those like play-by-play -play calls that uh, that that uh, the TV can offer. Instead, you uh, sort of have to yeah, piece it together yeah. yourself. And it's because you get to see the um, like the individual battles that aren't normally right seen yeah. on TV. Right. Yeah. Uh, sure. You can see them like each lap just like closing in on each other as they go around, and it's always good to follow. Yeah, that was that was cool. I mean, I I, I guess uh, Mike, you pointed this out when we went to the Canadian Grand Prix earlier this year, and it's that I just I, I guess I, we were doing something like, and I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. But we were sitting there, and like we were like just like counting seconds in between cars <laughs> to kind of yeah, because you you had to like pretty much place the story together like as it was happening in front of you, right? Which exactly. was awesome. You do all that yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're in front of like a, one of the big screens, like but no, but in, not even that. Like, there's not, there wasn't like that much, of, or at least the the coverage and the commentary. The, the commentary that we get wasn't it. the greatest. Yeah, no, the, <laughs> I don't. I, who does the commentary for like like at the track for the British Grand Prix? Is it like do they just play like one of like the Sky feeds or BBC feeds or? Is uh, there, like, I think there's just a guy in the in like a box guys. that I'm doing. I wasn't sure. I wasn't actually near any loudspeakers. I can hear. <laughs> yeah, who yeah. Was doing. yeah, you got to be <laughs> right in front of a speaker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was, I wasn't actually there as like a. Yeah, I was. There, I was actually doing some work for. Um, it's my girlfriend's godparents own a um, company, so that sort of do VIP packages to, like form like Formula One Grand Prix and like Le Mans and other things like that. So I was I was just there helping them. Oh, sweet! Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> getting paid to do that, but then I got to go watch the race, which is pretty good. So <laughs> I was sort of at the back, 
So I mean, there was a place on the first corner I managed to go watch the race from, but yeah, I wasn't in front of any speakers, so I couldn't hear what was going on. But mm. I could see from the screen. Did you get to ride the Ferris wheel? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't even notice that there was a Ferris wheel there, like until this year. So yeah, this, <laughs> so many years of going. Um, it's not quite the 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 Nurburgring roller coaster, but yeah. <laughs> um. So, so you started like. You know, you got you got into it at school. Uh, you you wrote this paper that you know you, you had to talk to some to, to some great people and and you know they pushed you in the right direction. Uh, the people have read it, uh, and now you brought it back and I read it and like it's it's it it is really quite good. Like, have you have you gotten any calls now from <laughs> from any from any motorsport magazines? Uh, unfortunately, I haven't. No, <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to put myself out there. I've been emailing well different like websites and. Mm-hmm publications and stuff with, with like a link to it and going hey read this like see how good i am yeah. <laughs> the internet talking. says so <laughs> yeah well, i haven't I haven't got anything back unfortunately yet but you know, i'm gonna keep trying yeah i'm sure just keep keep pumping them out well i know this pot this podcast in particular will just push you over the edge oh man oh you <laughs> just 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 be wait to, for, for, for the two or three extra views you're gonna get <laughs> as a consequence of being on here uh no but okay all right so let's let's delve right to this because i think this in with the article and and i do recommend anybody because um so you put you posted uh two versions of it one that was like a summary of the other basically but the longer version is uh um it's 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 really good for anybody that's interested into f1 because you really go through like a bit of the history and a bit of like where the where the whole like where this era started, which really was the outcome of the Foca Fisa Wars, and yeah, and 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 how like just after so many years of the model like doing what it's supposed to do, we're, we're probably getting to a point now where it's breaking down, and 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 it's 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 a bit of a of a bleak picture, but it's a bit of a of a hopeful picture at the same time. Because there is like it's clear that there is a way out, um, but right now, like it does seem to pretty much anybody that that knows and, and has any perspective on this, that it's it's just it's gonna collapse. Like if it keeps going the way it's going, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's what some of the experts are saying. Tiff Nadell, in particular, <laughs> they yeah. said the bleakest outlook of them all, saying that the sport is gonna collapse if it doesn't change. But I don't think he's wrong at all in, in saying that. No, it could it could very well do. Yeah, with the the like the teams that are struggling, the back market teams to to compete, like who may end up with only you know four or five teams that can viably compete in the sport, and then they may be having about like the B teams or having a third car or what's being said before in the past. So yeah, I'm it glad could, that it could go bad, thing. but you think cooler heads would prevail, and you think they would sort of come to some sort of compromise. To yeah, man, going. but. Honestly, like when I was twelve years old, I thought that adults knew what they were doing, and they don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, <laughs> like it's. I think it's irrational. Like it's 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 more irrational than you would think to think that these people know what they're doing just because they're the ones that are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doesn't always come with the job, and it's it's everything around them is changing way too fast, and I think it's how it's it's visible elsewhere in the world. Like any any other like situation right now that's like in you know stuck in a rut or like in a, in a in a big trouble like you can tell it's pretty much because of that they're like they're failing to adapt or to like move with the times to like respond to like the necessities of the now that mm-hmm. are changing drastically and drastically every day like deep like if it's in the current so you touch about like how uh the current system works where basically everybody has to agree on everything or a big majority of them and of course it, nothing's going to change because the big manufacturers the engine manufacturers right now have a lot of power because they supply most people with their engines and people need engines to race yeah so if, if, yeah it's it's kind of a bit like politics in a way where you get the you know the mps or i'm not sure how the canadian we have mps here too yeah, yeah. like and you get like the Very lobby similar. and they lobby each other to make them vote a certain way and it, i think it's, it's kind of like that where you know the big big teams here they just tell the small teams vote vote for this otherwise you know we're not going to supply avengers anymore yeah yeah so it's, it's a bit kind of not corrupt but you know it's it's not fair should we say yeah a lot of yeah. like favoritism towards like all this i mean if you look at ferrari and the older teams 
it's like, nah, it's it's gonna be our way. Yeah, because of who we are. It, it, Thanks. It, <laughs> it's not, it's not a solid argument. It's not, it's not a solid argument in today's day and age. Uh, no, <laughs> in a fair <laughs> sense, no. But you can see why because you know they are the the big teams, the most established teams, and they do bring a lot of fans to the sport. Like you go, you see every weekend. There's no matter what country, and there's always a massive Ferrari flags in the in the ground and. In the, in the stands and you know mm. uh, Mercedes and McLaren also have a lot of fans and they do bring in the money and you can see why Formula 1 are, are hesitant to do anything that would upset them right There's some, like, they, as the teams need to figure out those teams need to see that you know what they th- what's good for themselves is hurting the sport in general and they need to see that and think actually we should probably change it uh, oh. Oh. Otherwise, they could end up going down on the sport themselves. You know, if it all goes to pot. Uh, through your research, I mean, did anything sort of like stick out to you as as a solution to something to to one of these problems? Like how they could either change how much money people get or make it a little more fair. I think they should um, start enforcing a a cost cap, so or like this cert, certain amount they can spend on development or. Yeah, you know, something like that because it's just not fair. Mm-hmm. Where the big teams, they've just got an infinite amount of money. The big teams can spend how much, like how much they want. Like a, the GDP of a small country, just trying to, right. you know, research the best thing <laughs> for their engines. And then the, you know, the smaller teams have got nothing, and they can't, they just can't compete. Yeah, Mercedes think, dropping if there, if there a, a third of a billion where, dollars. <laughs> if they have a cap where they can just spend, you know, you've only got this much. That's all you can spend on, you know, sorting out your car for this season. I think they still, if even if they got the best, they got the best like scientists and technicians, and everything. So they'll probably still get better performance out of their cars, but at least it won't be as big. So the gap in the field shouldn't be as big. That's only theoretical, you know. I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not a technician any time. I don't really know how well it works like that. Something interesting happened this weekend, though, and there's been a bit of talk. Nothing finalized yet for next year, though, about somehow electronically equalizing the engines to within a one or two percent one and a half percent or something of horsepower but in the top eight finishing cars there are five different cars this weekend at hungary Mm -hmm. five different engines it's interesting mercedes first then the renault then ferrari and then the mclaren honda and then the toro rosso which is running a different ferrari engine last year's but at the same time though the seventh and eighth Finishers, Alonso and Sainz, were one lap down. Ooh. They were both lapped. But the top five different cars are five different engines well, wait, after uh, this race. How is that possible? Mercedes, Red... Uh, yeah. Well, the Red two Bull. Mercedes, then a Red Bull, then a Ferrari, Vettel, so then Verstappen. Yeah, these are the same car, though. Yeah, I know. Just, so, so where are the five different engines? I think you're... Mercedes. Yeah. There's a Renault. Renault. There's a Ferrari. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then here's a Honda. And then here's a Ferrari with a fifth so engine. Top seven, you mean? The yeah, but the, in the I said that in the top seven. You said at the top five. The, no, I said there's five <laughs> different engines in the top eight. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, but yeah, no, that's the top eight finishes. There's five different engines. That was. I, mean, hey, I think that that was just a great race for Fernando Alonso. <laughs> After the rest, the rest of his weekend, he actually finished seventh position in every every session of the whole weekend. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go well also. Yeah. But anyway, one lap down, it's kind of... That's like one race, right? Yeah. Doesn't this really is, say a whole lot. This is being pretty typical, though. Like, 7th, 8th, ninth place, they're already the cars are lapped. And then at the bottom, there's 2 and 3 laps down. So, from 18th back, all the cars are 2 laps down. But, and Button wasn't even allowed to finish. Or but, okay. able to finish. But here's the thing, and, and this is something that uh, that, that Curtis, you touched always, on, on always kind of on your argument. Oh yeah, on 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 yeah, on, on basically F1 is that like there has to be because it, because the the constructor championship exists. Yeah, there's it, always it, there's, a dominant car. There's always cars that are two laps down. <laughs> at the end it's, of the race, yeah. So I don't know. Okay, now I'm, I'm I'm interested in what Curtis said because so you touch on something that the cost cap that is something that. Um, Max mostly, and I, I, in, in the article, had proposed, or and, and I think that Max mostly gets a lot of flame because of his 
disgraceful exit of F1, but he's still saying some stuff that make that just plain makes sense. Like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I have to agree with him. There does have to be something along the lines of that, of a cost cap or something, just making it more even. Because there's nothing, nothing in there at the moment that's making anything even. So it's just the smaller teams cannot compete in any level, like whether it's financially or mechanically or anything like that. They just it, can't compete. It's funny because uh, I, I these guys recently got me into Formula One, and I've my observations of it is that like F1 is a it's a motorsport, and it's about the, having the best and the fastest car uh, to win. But then that philosophy conflicts with almost of like trying to put in competitiveness within it while the sport is struggling and it's kind of like a, a snake biting its own tail where it doesn't it, it it will never solve itself it'll always just keep on devouring <laughs> its own tail until it reaches the head um so it, it's always going to be difficult to to balance something like like this in formula one but well in the argument again or at least i guess because they they've they've tried to do that before and for some sort of a cost cap and and you brought this up too uh curtis that uh, the problem with doing that is that the teams that voted or keep voting it down because they keep saying it's unenforceable how 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 would you possibly possibly enforce that yeah it it, it is it's go? tough it's tough because you like at one point at one point do you stop counting like whose contribution and putting like a dollar or or pound amount to that because mm -hmm. if you're talking about mercedes like yes they have like the team and the factory and whatever and like that costs them an, an amount of money but they also have all the support of their factory back in stuttgart mm -hmm. and and all of the mercedes engineers worldwide um that work like even in just like a little spring or whatever of the engine that like so so how do you quantify that which is i guess it's, it would be their main argument mm -hmm. But like that kind of stuff, fall, like it, it falls thin because, yeah, you could have that and maybe that'll give you an advantage, but it wouldn't be like at the deficit of the rest of the sport. Like a, a cost cap does make sense. And like, yeah, you could make all, you could sit around here all, all day arguing that, oh, you know, but things are complicated and everything is more complicated than you would think. It doesn't mean that simple solutions don't affect it. And, and the cost cap would be an, an achievable, simple solution that they probably like wouldn't have to do much about to, to implement. And they can, they, mm -hmm. you know what? They can at least try to enforce it, whether whether it can be done in practice or not. Who cares? Let's let's just give it a shot. See what see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't. We can't really say. We'll see. They probably got you know the best minds in the world trying to work out and this is just you know from the average fans we're from the outside looking in but mm -hmm. sometimes you need that perspective to look out from the outside and think this is what's wrong you guys can't see that because you're too busy worrying about other things on the inside and i think they do need to take into account what you know the average people say and the people that aren't affiliated to the sport in any way who just watch it and that's, they, i think they should take into account what they think and whether, what problems there are i'm sure they can come to some agreement or compromise between everyone did you notice any of that uh during your um interviews or the people you were talking to that you know they're sort of inside of this world of f1 and it's almost difficult to to see it any other way than sort of being within it well out of the people i interviewed um there's kevin eason he's, he's the um motorsport correspondent at the times um so he's 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 within he's in within the media world he's not in like the the corporate structure of F1, same right. with Joe Sayward and Tiff Nadell, you know, they're all they're all to do with the sport and they're all there every like every weekend, but they're not affiliated with the with the business itself, unlike right. Christian Silt, who I interviewed, who at the time I didn't know when I interviewed him, I, I thought he was just a writer for Forbes, but from what Joe Sayward told me that he is in Bernie Eccleston's pocket, to quote himself, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying this, but, <laughs> and yeah, he's, you know, he's affiliated to Bernie Eccleston, and he was oh, saying, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, it's, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong. You, you, you do, you do get the feel that like, it, in, in your article, when you quote, uh, Silt, it's like, yeah, we know Silt said it, but those are Bernie's words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I didn't, yeah, I, I generally didn't know how, <laughs> how close he was to Bernie at the time and I spoke to him I just thought oh this is good this, this is one side of the argument this is good for my piece but then yeah. 
No, but, but he, was, it, he was a genuine, he was a nice guy, and he helped me out. But, yeah. you no, know, it's 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 great that 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 uh, the, I I did find that very cool that you included sort of both sides um, uh, to that, especially when when talking to Christian Silt and like. <clears throat> You can see that, like you know, where where they're coming from with some of their arguments, like uh, when uh, when he's defending how they go to like all these different places and like whatever, and like they they, they have the money and whatever. But you, you 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 can see that argument, like you can probably like make make mm-hmm. that argument all day. It doesn't mean that it's sustainable. Like yeah, you go yeah. you go to you go to where the money is, but like to to whose detriment? Like you got to think about that, like. It, have you noticed it, man? Like in being in Europe and in in the core of 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 F one full uh, the following, I think Great Britain is like right at the heart, the beating heart of motorsport, and and, and some of the most enthusiastic fans of the sport. You must have noticed that decline, and like and overall, some people just getting pissed off and stop watching. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like when I when I was little and watching it growing up, like. There's a lot of people I knew used to watch it and used to be big fans. Like even like my, my, my dad used to sit down and watch it with me, but now he, he doesn't watch it, he gets bored. Mm-hmm. Like I have it on, he'll just be like, Oh no, it's too boring. That's same with my friends. I'm <laughs> one of the only ones of my friends that watches it, no one else sort of really cares for it. And I've I've seen a decline like now if you mention it to someone who's not a fan mm-hmm. you say, Oh, you watch the F one, they just go, No, nah, it's boring it's boring, why would you want to watch that? Because all they see is just you know the t- same two cars out the front every time, right. or the same person winning every race. That's all they see. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. You you brought up uh, uh, Eason there. Uh, what's the name? Kevin Eason. Yeah. That? Yeah. Um, and and something that he said, uh, or like that the, the you quoted him for later down in the article, uh, really I think like captured to me like what one of the biggest like problems in f1 is right now like when you um so he said i'm just gonna quote here um it's quite difficult to see a future for the sport it doesn't really know if it's the new tech of motoring or the old entertainment industry of noisy v10 engines um and now but that actually like up to that point like that that really speaks to me in in the saying because there is no clear future there is no clear direction of um like the, the best way that I can think of it is that, you know, with the big companies or whatever, like whenever you join like any company of any size, uh, they like one of the first uh, things that like that you do is like you read about the company, like when they like the HR person gives you a stack of paper about like mm-hmm. the mission of the company and the vision of the company or like, where are we going? This is the company's culture, mm-hmm. yada, 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 yada. And based on that is how they do everything they do. All right. It. Like it seems like F one is missing something like that. Like there, there's, there's a lack of of direction of, of direction of of that vision. What's the vision? What's the mission? Yeah. Like let's sit down. Nobody's nobody nobody seems to be too worried about. It. Let's sit down and define what is Formula One. They and, don't they don't explain the motors at all. It's not about the technology because they keep it all as secret as possible. Mm-hmm. Right. The we know the engines are incredible. So. They're not pushing that side of it. They're not the noisy V10 entertainment anymore. They're going back to the fat cars with big tires and everything next year. But mechanical but what's, grip. What's what? the what's the purpose? What like so it, it's all these look, changes just look, look just look like they're just rolling the dice, see yeah. what's see yeah, yeah, what's yeah. gonna happen, with a, like trying to figure out like yes, what's F1 and if it's if if it's if F1 is the pinnacle of motorsport, what does that mean? You know what is what does F one have to be to actually like have like a true claim to that? Yeah, now nowadays, yeah, because it's, it's different now. People don't see it as that. It, it it's arguably that it is still, but people don't see it because nobody understands what it really is. <laughs> I think <laughs> you know the, I mean? the owners need to make a decision. Like, how are they going to run it? Are they going to run it as a business where? They're just trying to try and maximize the amount of profit, which I think is what they're doing at the moment. They're just trying to maximize the profit out of everything. You know, you're going to run it as a business, get as much money out as possible, or do they want to run it as a sport where you want to you want to bring the best entertainment, you know, please the fans, please the crowds, and then if you do that, you bring in the money anyway. Like the more mm-hmm. more people get watching it, the inevitably you're going to get more money. Why do you think, think that they don't understand that? Because I, it's that seems clear to me and clear to everybody that that I speak to about F1 that has any knowledge of it that 
they could probably be still making tons and tons and tons of money if they just listened to what the fans wanted. Uh, in one word, that's agreed. <laughs> at the moment, you know, the revenues are still going up. Yeah. Even though there was all this talk, you know, the declining viewers, declining yeah. attendances. Um, but overall, the revenues have been going up. They've been going up year on year for the past because of uh, pay five TV. years or so. Yeah, yeah, because of pay TV, and that's what the owners see, like CBC and all that. They, they, they know nothing about F one. They were not affiliated in any way before they bought it out. They've just seen, here's a profitable sport. Let's just buy it. Mm-hmm. And that's what they've done, and yeah. the revenues are going up, and that's all they care about. Yeah. Well, this is this is from what I got from my research. It's just this is an assumption I'm making. I don't know this for sure, but it's just that's you know they've seen their profits going up. They're happy. They why change anything? Like if it's not broke, yeah, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kind of thing. You know? mm. I think they're scared of it. If they change it, revenues will go down. They're going to start losing money. But it will for a little bit, and then it will be picked back up once the audience is picked back up. You have to like. I well, mean, yeah, you. But, you think so, but from their view, they probably they think you know any well, the, any losses. They're bad. thinking quarter to quarter. They're, they're, yeah, they're not exactly. even thinking year to year. Yeah, season. They want to please their shareholders. Season. That's, that's yeah. all they all they're worried about. Now we we've talked a bit about uh, and there's like always rumors going around about F1 being sold. Mm-hmm. Uh, did any research you like seen? Uh, did it suggest that maybe that's what they're looking to do? There was talk. I spoke with Christian about it. Um, where this is one I spoke to him. This was in I think it was back in December 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a bit old now. But there was talk of like a Qatari company coming in and buying it. Oh yeah. Um, and that was, the, and then I spoke to him about that, and he was like, "Well, there's talks, but nothing, um, nothing, nothing solid yet." Near the Apple rumors I, last week. Yeah, and there's the Apple thing coming out. I'm not sure how, how like, strong those rumors are. Or how... Yeah, I don't know. At the start of the season, Bernie came out and said that there were two major interested parties, and that uh, due diligence was happening. But that was already three, four months ago. One of them was yeah. at the time to the. I don't remember the name, but it was the owner of the Miami Dolphins NFL team. Oh, yeah. I don't know who that was, but they're some sort of billionaire. It's funny because, like, the state of F1, they wouldn't really, if they were actually looking to sell it, they're not going to make these huge fundamental changes and maybe lose value in Formula One. Uh, And it just doesn't make any sense for them to change, like, to streaming services or anything like that. Yeah. they're trying to, to me, it seems like they're trying to make it look as pretty as possible. And like, ah, here you go. Now you can yeah, yeah. set it for the future. Let it go like a dove. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 oh by the way, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is all freshly painted, but there's all kinds of mold behind that wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looks nice. Yeah. It's, it's breaking, though. I, again, going back to your article, man, like, it, to that, like I, th- I, th- I think it was like uh, Tiffany Dale. He said like they they should just let it go bankrupt, <laughs> and then and then uh, you know buy it back from CVC for nothing, and and then start start from start fresh. Like that's that's another solution that I see. I mean, if if they actually let that go and like yeah, like the the, the fanhood would probably suffer for a little bit, but from the I from the ashes it shall that. rise. <laughs> They're not going to do that. Let me just throw this in. Stephen Ross is his name. The last news from this, though, came from October 2015. Where there was a rumor that Stephen Ross, who owns half of the Miami Dolphins, and him and a consortium of Qatari investors mm. were looking at a $8.5 billion valuation on Formula One. But that was October. Now is the last news from that. So I guess yeah. that I guess that melted I that's away. What, that's what I asked Christian about, and he wasn't too sure. Well, he didn't want to disclose anything to me. So. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. But th- that's been around like basically since the failed um, flotation on on Singapore. It's there's always like every every handful of months there's like a new story of like yeah. This story is eight eight to nine months old now. So bu- buying F one. There's there's a new person buying F one. There's the, at one point Sky. Was rumored to like <laughs> be interested in some shares. How bad would that be for the sport? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love Sky and I love their coverage, but the the little bit of a conflict of interest, yeah, maybe? to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch uh, Sky or Channel Four? Uh, I watch Sky. That's a bit, yeah. Nice. Have you seen any Channel Four? 
Have you watched any of it this season? I was around a friend's. I was watching the qualifying on Channel Four um, this week. I think it's the first first time I actually properly sat down and watched it mm-hmm. properly. And I was quite impressed. I quite enjoyed it. To be fair. Yeah, they're not bad, right? It's just yeah, it's, no, yeah, to yeah. me. For me, I watched a little bit this week and a bit last week. It's just the familiarity, really. Like they're good still. It's just like they're not the voices I'm used to. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. all it really is. It's just a little throwing off. But like Karun Chandok's really good. He knows a lot of his like history type stuff. He knows a little facts. He was I don't know. Tri- I don't really know who. Yeah, he was a driver. Boy, he, he's good at the commentary. But like, I don't know the other guys. I don't know. Just don't know them as well. Just already been watching these other guys for years now. <laughs> yeah, I like. I don't know. I've grown up with Martin Brundle, like always offering. Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah, for sure. I quite, I quite enjoy it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's got to be. Was just with Martin Brundle on Sky. It's got to be Brundle. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. The commentary has got to be Brundle. Brundle. He was away for those two races, and like I could like I was like, man, I miss Brundle. <laughs> like apparently we said last week those two races was the first that he missed since 2008 sometime wow <laughs> for eight years he missed two races that's a crazy that's little pretty, man that's, that's pretty crazy that's yeah. gotta take like all of like your your efforts does that scare you does that does that not scare you that like maybe you'll get to, have to like be like part of like the f1 circus and then all of a sudden you have to like have then no all of a sudden you're life. part of the circus yeah th- th- yeah then that's it you're stuck there and like you have to follow all the races and like your f- your family's never gonna see you <laughs> yeah well, right now that seems like an amazing prospect <laughs> I, know, I, love, <laughs> I love travel i love experiencing new places but yeah i can see like if you have a family and commitments at, at home then mm-hmm. it must be a bit annoying like having to go every every other weekend but... where's home at that point you know what i mean like <laughs> well, it's like you live out your suitcase you? <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Looks like next year is only going to be 17, 18 races anyway, so we'll see. Do you think Might that not they'll ever not have the British Grand Prix? Sorry? Do you think that the, the British Grand Prix will ever come under fire? Like, the, will they ever not have it? Because right now, yeah, we're talking about, and we've been talking about this in recent weeks a lot, how there's just, like, even more than before, like, we hear, like, about an, uh, a new track, a new old track, like, in danger of, like, not renewing the contract. Italy, like, who knows what's going to happen with Monza? Who knows what's going to happen with... And Imola and San Marino. This, now there's a big fight there. Yeah, is this going to be the three... last German Grand Prix next weekend? Like, yeah, is it? Might like, be. Like, Nürburgring's rings out of business. And it's... Uh, the GPDA... Or no, sorry. The, in Britain is the, the the British Racing Drivers Association. Or whatever, though. The BRDC. Yeah. They're the ones that own or manage the British Grand Prix at Silverstone, right? Yeah. And they don't receive any help from any level of government it's just no. all ticket sales no yeah it's all ticket sales yes yeah. not they're sustainable they're looking to sell the, well yeah they're looking to sell the circuit it's jaguar yes. might come in and buy it as a test circuit for their their production vehicles yeah but what if they don't like so then yeah. so then what like so what, might, what's next the british grand prix is gonna is not is not gonna happen maybe that's ridiculous I, I hope i never see the day where where that happens but you don't know in this in this climate of formula one especially with bernie's you know, he'll take any chance that you know in North Korea come with a right price. He'll send it. He'll send it there. Of course he would. So it's, yeah, I hope it never happens. But. Oh, this 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 rich country with a lot of uh, you know rich history. You get a picture of him whispering in Kim Jong Un's ear. <laughs> but Kim Jong Un will be in. He'll be in like the driver's room at the end, congratulating them. So. Oh, 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 they're yeah. gonna give him a car. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna race. <laughs> Oh, and man. everyone will just have to go very, very slow <laughs> and let them win. <laughs> One of the support races, at least. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man, I don't know. that's it, it's it's too crazy, man. <laughs> what and you mentioned also in in your article that that that's it's it's what's happening and and it's sad that it's happening, but yeah, like we have tracks that are being shed and the benefit of like new fancy you know shiny tilka drums but they are just that they're not like they're like korea didn't work uh yeah in india like india didn't work, didn't work. istanbul they had to Tur- shut it turkey down didn't work like in turkey it's not gonna work now yeah so, yeah turkey's not, <laughs> turkey's definitely not gonna work. or who knows man because buddy's beheading people so yeah that might <laughs> that might give him more more pull with with bernie baku worked once at least <laughs> but what's that? That was the other boring race of this year, though. Yeah. It's. It... Yeah. <laughs> so how, how do you yeah, how do you balance know. that? Like how how do you how do you balance like keeping the traditional tracks, 
the traditional European tracks in place, the ones that matter at least, uh, versus like expanding the market to like reach new people? Well, that's the thing. Like that, they're, they're charging astronomical amounts to, just to host yeah. a race, um, and it's just it's not fair. Obviously, these new these new tracks coming from these countries, there the government are willing to throw money at it just to get some sort of world event in their country so they can say show off go hey look how good our country is like we've got no problems here like hide away the poor people for a weekend as, as the world comes and watches us yeah. or civil war yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, none of that's happening here no what <laughs> like, no what so they they hide like they hide that way and bernie will take any money he can like they're kind of just throwing absurd amounts around and he'll take it but you know it's this historical identity of Formula one is so strong and that's what you know, what's what it's drawn upon, like it's been around for you know, over fifty years. Mm-hmm. And I think for it to lose the tracks such as you know, Silverstone, Monza, Nürburgring, it's, it'll be a travesty. Canada. Yeah, there's, Canada. There's a quote here this morning now from the mayor of Montreal, Dennis Corder, saying, uh, not to worry, we'll have some more information soon. This is from uh, Formula Passion IT. Apparently, they called the circuit to try to buy tickets, and they told them that we don't know if the Canadian Grand Prix will take place next year. So you can't buy tickets yet. Uh-oh. This magazine called them. and uh, it, 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 They are ridiculous fees, and where, whereas really they shouldn't. I think the only... Well, I think track- there's a little co- corruption there maybe in Montreal that, that the money, like the federal government was supposed to pitch in for that $40 million, build the f- proper facilities... They haven't built anything in the past three three years now. Still, man, like you, it's you're, good enough. You're, you're talking about like with some with, with, with what some of these tracks are being demanded to pay. It's like almost extortion. Yeah, like it's <laughs> it's almost extortion. Tens it's, of millions of dollars. Yeah, you just for three days. You're gonna like try to like get as much money per like per each one of those deals. Because that's what like that's what Bernie's job is is it is, um, but like you ha- you have to like you have to think that too many of those deals and all of a sudden what like we're just gonna end up with one two races in Europe one race in North America and the rest elsewhere mm-hmm. and then are people still gonna watch? Right, it's like it's like pissing in your in your fishing pond. You know, yeah, eventually yeah. it's just going to be pee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I know this is a touchy subject too, but three weeks outside of the Formula One Grand Prix, maybe it's four. Mm. Is the Formula E double header in Montreal? So if this race doesn't happen, I don't think anyone's going to be too worried. Like I want, I'd rather watch the Grand Prix. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but the, that's filling in the gap now, oh, and, yeah. and in a major city worldwide for f1 racing for grand prix racing montreal well and, and that's they host we're hosting a double header for well, formula e and and, and, and that's the next three weeks thing. three weeks apart right now like like f1 could make all these outrageous claims and like ask you know the people in power could Threat, ask people, threats yeah threats these like threats. just these threats and like ask people for all kinds of outrageous shit because they were the one thing that that everybody around the world watched but i don't i don't know man i think that right now if you were like even even mildly curious about motorsport, there's so many options that are so easy to access, way easier to access to F1, that like like are you are you risking alienating that entire section of the population just to keep this this stupid status quo going? Like, wh- like what do you think? Are you, in in Britain, like it's, like, I know that you guys have like, or over there, like there's just like a lot more motorsport in general that people have access to way easier, the touring cars, the World Rallycross, that type of stuff. Like, is that picking up? Like, to the detriment of F1, have you noticed? Uh, I haven't really noticed too much. No, um, the British touring cars is always it's always on like free to air terrestrial TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always on on like a Sunday afternoon, and yeah, it's good to watch. Like anyone could just be scrolling through the channel and stick it on and be like, "Oh yeah, that's really good." Like that's I enjoy that, and then watch it next week kind of thing. But with Formula One, whether it's on pay TV, if someone's you're not going, no one's going to scroll across and watch it unless it's on the channel four one. But right. that's, you know, it's only half the races. Yeah, that's the kind of thing we're missing out is that it's not there for 
the casual person just to stumble across and see and be like, actually, you know, that's quite good just because it's behind all these paywalls and it just seems a bit too out of reach mm. for a, a That's how I found out about Formula One, just flicking TV when I was a kid. Yeah, there you go. Like, Whoa, this looks so cool. And I just watched it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't, know. yeah, I've, uh, I wasn't, I, I'm not going to, like, when I started to get into F1 or like, like you know, really get into F1, I wasn't gonna pay anybody to watch it. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, come on! Like, no. I, I was barely watching like a couple races here and there. Like, you know, years past. So, wh- why? Like, what's what's the motivation to pay? I just just as easily like could download it or, you know, go like see it at somebody else's place or something. Yeah. Some yeah. might call me a super fan now. I still don't want to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not what they charge anyway. No. Yeah. I but. It's okay. Now here's one thing because I think that uh, uh, like I was saying, like y- your article like really is, like hones into what some of the biggest problems are um, with with F1. But um, what do you think that like us like uh, as fans uh, that we can do to like kind of sh- try to get this going in the right direction? Like do you, like do you think there's you're right there, Mike? <laughs> Uh, do you think that there's anything that the fans like can do to like either like help the sport go in the right direction or at least like you know help like people get into F1 like despite all this that's happening? I think we we need to make our voices heard, and let them know this is what we want. Like we want not everything free. Obviously, they're not going to just put everything, but at least some more more access to the sport. Like you know, like a. a no, they have a YouTube channel, but it's not that good, is it? No. Like they need to. <laughs> Wait, they have at, a like, YouTube the NASCAR channel? channel. They post highlights on the race like straight away. Just oh, yeah, soon. yeah. And, like I think the Formula One needs to follow that. Just it keeps us like happy. We can we like see an incident, we can watch it straight away, and like, other casual people can just stumble across it on YouTube and be like, because I end up watching like you know NASCAR highlights. I don't even really watch NASCAR, but I watch like the little highlight videos they put on just because you know it looks yeah. cool. It's just little bits of the action that I like to watch. Mm-hmm. I, I watched think the, needs to do that. I, I watched the Toronto fans. India on YouTube last week. I stumbled across it. I wasn't looking. It just came up on the suggestions. Mm-hmm. I threw it on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have never watched it otherwise. But that's kind of the equivalent. That's like the, 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 today's equivalent yeah. of like flicking through channels. It's like yeah, that little sidebar on YouTube. comes up on YouTube. If it just more, keeps scrolling. If more F1 stuff was just allowed to be there in the first place, like I guarantee you like viewership would pick up yeah, right def- away. But any video now, like an authorized video, it just gets taken down straight away. And I can see why they do that. I know there's copyright laws and everything, but... But yeah, if they're not doing it themselves... They, they, they need to start producing more content themselves. If yes, they're going to take it. other people's away, they need to do it themselves. Yeah. I yeah, think cause... they're starting to do that a bit more now, I think. Yeah, because right now there's really nothing. Like, if you go on the subreddit, which is really nice, because, like, people po- post these little streamables, like, right after the race, you're like, oh, great, this w- I want to see this. I want to discuss it. I want to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. But if, if it's constantly getting taken down, you're like, well, I guess I won't talk about it, and I'll just go home and watch something else. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, even us, for sure, using clips legally, on like, on this podcast, just talking over stuff, whatever, whatever. We've had this show taken down. Yeah, we've, yeah doing... we've had a couple of, uh, episodes taken down, even though we were playing by the rules, and still, like they wouldn't, they won't allow it. Yes, yeah, so we're not broadcasting the race. We're talking about a few seconds of the race, <laughs> yeah, it's and they pulled on a whole like two hours of us talking about their sport. <laughs> it's it's silliness. It's so it's so out of touch with the modern day. Like, yeah. that's not going to take any money away from them. Like, if yeah, anything, yeah. it's going to garner more interest. In yeah. It. So well, the the response for us is we just don't use any clips anymore. Which, at all so, yeah pff, well we have to we've been we've even been legally driven to that but it, it's it, it is interesting want exactly to. what you said yeah it's not taking any money away from it it's if anything like adding to the interest it, uh, i think uh, a, a popular case study about this or a famous case study uh is what happened after monty python decided to release like they, <laughs> they just got tired of like paying like apparently yeah they, they got tired of paying their lawyers or whatever to take youtube videos down so they were like all right we're just gonna like post like all of the clips from like s- like all the seasons uh available on our youtube channel and since then their dvd sales have actually gone down gone up so <laughs> <laughs> since since they did that like their actual sales of like material like have actually gone up because people are like sharing and talking oh, about this? it and that's so, yeah, yeah. Like, something send it funny. to their friends yeah absolutely that and that's oh man 
hopefully, like like you said, cooler he- heads will definitely prevail. Or at least that's that's the hope. <laughs> <laughs> and and if they don't, then the sport will burn to the ground, and there's still hope, from what I got from Steve from Tiff Nadell there. <laughs> they, I think they just need a fresh input. Like it's all run by, you know, fifty, sixty year old men, that are sort of a bit out of touch with the, you know, the modern day. Like they're all still, you know, in the days of the seventies and eighties, where it's just trying to maximize profit, and they need to need to get a fresh in. They need someone young to come in and be like. This is how you market it to the modern day audience. Like it's all everything's internet based. Yeah. That guy who owns the Miami Dolphins is seventy six years old. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie yeah. is eighty four years old. It's, it's all these gray haired men in suits. If only they would listen to us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. I, all right, man. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I guess we uh, won't take much more of your time. It's already. Yeah, <laughs> it's thanks. almost been an hour. Thank you so much for for stopping by the show. Great article yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, great article. Pleasure. Hope you had fun. We had fun. Yeah, uh, a lot of fun interview. Uh, again, I recommend to all of our uh, listeners and viewers, we will be putting a link to uh, the battle for F1's billions. Um, yeah, just keep it up, man. In the comments. Yeah. Write some more. Hey, yeah, let, let us know what, uh, you know, ch- ch- check, uh, check in with us later if, uh, if, if, if you end up landing any, pos- any significant position. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I definitely luck, will. And, <laughs> and if you don't, too. What? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thanks a lot, oh, man. Yeah, thanks and, a lot. Uh, we'll, right. we'll, 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 maybe we'll, we'll talk later and do another one of these uh, uh, in, in the future. Yeah, no, it'll be a pleasure, definitely. I've enjoyed myself. <laughs> you guys have been great, and thank you very much for having me on. All no right, man. Thanks, Chris. Cheers. See you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. What a great guy. That was fantastic. Yeah. Cool.